Well, it's all hands on deck for progressives now that Republicans have chosen a new Speaker of the House of Representatives who will now officially become the most dangerous threat to democracy our country has ever seen. Oh. Ah! Now, this one's going to be a bit of a tough sell, though, because the new speaker, Mike Johnson, is a fairly genial man. Oh, he's ruffled the feathers of Jerry Nadler. These, these are your words. You said, quote, there should be substantial cuts to the police budget, unquote. So they cut one billion dollars. Yes, exactly. They Reclaiming my time. Yes, that's exactly what I said. And, it's and what I meant was what I said a moment ago. They should cut substantial funds from the police to give it to mental health. How did that work out? But that doesn't take much. This isn't Chip Roy. Everything the American people is watching right now is a complete sham. Or John Kennedy. Again. Who haunted you, Pope? So tell me why I'm seeing all of these self-important professors warning us about Johnson's dangerous goals. Why is the Daily Beast putting out headlines that warn Johnson is more dangerous than Donald Trump? Why is liberal commentator Bill Maher hosting professors and Fox News contributors who are calling him... ...is David Duke Light. What we did now... Yeah. Maher himself later compared Johnson to the main massacre shooter, for heaven's sake. And why? One reason. This. I, I am a Bible-believing Christian. Someone asked me today in the media, they said, it's a curious, people are curious, what does Mike Johnson think about any issue under the sun? I said, well, go pick up a Bible off your shelf and read it. That's, that's my worldview. That's what I believe. Dude, that's it. I know it seems crazy to a rational person, but when it comes to Christianity, I mean, real Christianity, Bible-believing, Jesus is the actual son of the actual one true God, born of a virgin, died on a cross, raised on the third day, that Christianity, the progressive left can't handle it. They lose all control of their bodily functions. <laughs> You get opinion pieces warning of Christo-fascism from people apparently unaware that Christian thinking undermines the case for fascism. You get Time Magazine warning of a Mike Johnson-led push for Christian nationalism, which is something Marr concurs with, apparently. But he is a religious nut. I mean, maybe I'm too biased to see it since I'm a Christian myself, but does this actually sound nutty? Everybody comes to the House of Representatives with deep personal convictions. But all of our personal convictions are not going to become law. That's, this is a, a, a big body of people. There's 435 members in the House. You have to argue and find consensus and all of that. Right. Every single congressman and woman has their own worldview, their own belief system, and they will push for what they think is right and try to enact laws that are consistent with their own personal moral convictions, a.k.a. their own religious beliefs. So why do they all do it, but it's only fascism when Mike Johnson does the same thing? I swear, man, nobody even tries to think critically anymore. What's more, the people who disagree with Mike Johnson, they'll say things like, well, actually, Jesus believed in caring for the less fortunate and caring for the outsider. See, what is that? You want laws based on what you think Jesus actually taught. Is that Christian nationalism? I'm telling you, we live in exceptionally silly times. And if that's in question, check out what I think may be my favorite, to this point, anti-Johnson piece. The Atlantic actually ran this story. In 1867, Mike Johnson's great-great-great-grandfather, a Confederate soldier, pledged not to engage in rebellion again. Okay, so let me see if I follow this. Mike Johnson's ancestor, from six generations ago, he promised an oath of loyalty to the Union, just like every other Southerner at that time that wanted their citizenship back. And that was worth a story? Today? Why? I mean, can we eagerly anticipate articles on Mike Johnson's 15 other great-great-great-grandfathers? What possible bearing could any of that have on America's current issues? I mean, you know the answer to that question. Ask yourself, how closely do you personally align with your own great-great-great-grandfather's views on life? Right. You probably couldn't even give me the guy's name. And that is how far progressives will go to try to delegitimize a dude simply because he's a Republican and he confesses Christ. That isn't normal.